Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma LaFave and today I got a package from an art store of art supplies that I purchased. I purchased a lot of watercolor pencils and some watercolor crayons that I have been dying to try out and paint something slash draw something for you with them. So that is what we are doing today. So let's dive right in. Okay, so the first thing I got are these Caran Dash Neocolor watercolor crayons. I have been wanting to try them. I've tried watercolor pencils, but I've seen other artists use these crayons and I have just been very interested to see how they work. This is a pack of 15 colors and I have to say it was like 50 bucks, maybe a bit more, I can't remember. Um, so it is on the pricier side. I don't know how this is gonna go or even if I'm gonna like this medium, but I thought I'd give it a try. Okay, and the other thing I got, <laughs> Um, well, I got the giant 120 pack of watercolor pencils from Faber-Castell. So if you guys have seen my videos before, you know that I have the small pack. I think it's like 24 of them. And one of my complaints about that pack is that they just, they didn't have many good greens and green is my favorite color, especially for florals. Like I do a lot of greenery and the fact that I had to layer greens to get the kind that I wanted was really annoying. So I decided to get the big pack with all of the colors. Oh my gosh. So here's the first tray. Ah, look at all those greens. Okay, this, this is better. Oh, there's so many of them. Oh, there's so many pretty greens that I'm, okay, I'm happy. I, that, that was worth it. And finally, oh my gosh. Okay, so this is a little um, intense. Ooh, look at the pinks too. Okay, but I think this is definitely worth it. So now all that's left to do is try them out. I gotta test it out. So let's, let's draw slash paint something. Okay, so the first thing I wanna actually look at are these watercolor crayons because I have never tried these before. I do have a tutorial on using the watercolor pencils because I did have that smaller pack before. Um, so if you'd like to watch that tutorial of how to use them and all my tips and tricks, I will link it below. But I do want to try these out first before we paint something more grand <laughs> with both of these because I'm really curious about these. Okay, also I think I said before that I wasn't the biggest fan of wall water, waller, water soluble pencil crayons or colored pencils or whatever you call them um, just because I felt like they left too much texture behind but I feel like my taste is starting to evolve and I'm just more open to using different textures in my work so I did want to try these and that's why I bought the big pack of those the colored pencils because I just I wanted them okay so let's take a look at these things I'm kind of excited hope they don't let me down all right what is this is this a sticker I don't know what that is, but it looks like a sticker. And here they are. So here are the wax watercolor crayons. So to use them, you just draw with them. I mean, I, there's a few different ways you can use them, but essentially what you do is you draw with a nice dark crayon. And then you're gonna take your paintbrush, make sure it's nice and wet, not dripping. And you're just gonna ooh, turn it into watercolor. Okay, that is creamy. But you still get some of that texture underneath, which is really cool. So you can use it like that where you draw first. Or I think another way that you could do it um, is say you create a small area where you color, maybe on a separate piece of paper, and then you activate it with water and then you can use it kind of just like like watercolor and just take it from this area. So you could use it like that if you don't want the texture and then you just have nice watercolors. Um, or I think, I think you can also use it wet on wet. I don't know if I, I like the look of it. I've seen other people do it. I mean, it's kind of cool. It's a little bit fuzzy. It's like not like a crisp line. You see that? It's kind of cool, but, um, yeah, they're, they're just really pigmented. Um, 
and creamy and nice. Let's see how they do with layering or well, blending and layering. So I'm going to blend two colors together. So I'm going to start over here, make it darker over here, and then I'm going to start to go just a little bit lighter. Then I'm going to pick another color. I always do pink and blue for this. I don't know why. Yeah, they're nice and dark. I like that. And then start to go lighter towards the middle. And then they're going to blend together in there. So we're going to try and blend those two colors together. And then I'm also going to try and layer so I can get a new color. Again, our greens in this palette are kind of artificial looking. I don't love these kind of bright colors for a lot of my florals and greenery. So I like to try and make more neutral colors. So let's do like a leaf here with this green. Actually, this green isn't too bad. Well, it doesn't look too bad right now. And then to neutralize it, you could use orange or red. I'm going to use this like orangey red. So I'm just going to do a little bit over top. But not too much because I want it mostly green. And see how this goes. <laughs> okay. So now let's get our wet paintbrush. And we're going to blend. So I'm going to start at this end. Activate it. Slowly move it towards the center. Wash off my brush. Go to the other side. Activate it. And then meet it in the middle and you should get a new color. I'm going to wash off my brush. I'm going to just dry it on my paper towel just so I can blend it a bit better. It actually blends pretty nicely. I'm seeing a lot of this pink underneath. Let me just try and render it out a bit more. There we go. That blends really nicely, actually. I'm very surprised. And then let's try this. Oh, I might have added too much orange, but I've made brown. <laughs> okay, that's the hard part about mixing colors is trying to figure out the amounts to put of each color. I mean, it's still kind of like a dark green. See, it's a nice dark green. It's a little bit too orangey in there. But I kind of achieved that dark green. I think I just needed a little less orange. I still did it. I still did it. Let's make a... I'm going to do a gradient of light to dark. Because this is one of the tips that I had for my um, watercolor pencils. So darker at the top. And then you're going to slowly make it lighter like that. Okay. And then when you're ever doing um, an area where you want a light value and a dark value, always start with the light value. So start down here at the light value, because if you start up here, actually, I'm going to show you the difference. If you start, I really like this blue. If you start with the dark value, when you activate it, you're just going to bring down all that pigment and you're not going to get a gradient really. If you want to have the difference in values, always start with the lighter area and then work your way up. Just need a little bit more. To the really pigmented area and see, and that's how you get a really good gradient. Um, always go light to dark with watercolor pencils. Same thing with if you're doing like a petal of some sort. Okay, I think I I do this in a tutorial soon. Let's say I'm doing a tulip. Okay, I have my outline of the tulip. And I want the center to be lighter, the bottom to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to put most of my color here, maybe a little bit at the top, most of it down here. And I want it nice and dark in there. Okay. Maybe I'll add just a little bit of orange to the lighter area. Just a little bit. Okay. If I'm doing this, always start with the lightest area. So start moving it around in here so you get this really light wash of pigment. And then move to the darker areas. Like that. Okay, and then I can go back up here. Now, if it looks like it's pretty like solid line between the light and the dark, wash off your brush, dry it on paper towel. I don't know why my paper towel is all the way over there. And then blend out that line of the light and the dark together. 
and you get a nicer even blend. See that? Okay. And then again, if you want to just wash it off, dry it, and you get a nice blend. Okay. So again, start the lightest area and blend out to the darker areas. That's the biggest tip I have when using any kind of water, I cannot say water soluble, water soluble, <laughs> water soluble, oh my gosh, water soluble medium, okay? Always start light to dark. This one can just be dark because it's behind, okay? And then you just wash off your brush, dry it, and blend out any lines that seem a little bit too harsh, okay? Because if you don't do that, just if you don't do that, Okay, I'll just show you one more time. Okay, you start in the darker area and then you move it into the lighter area. It's just gonna be all one color. You're pushing that dark pigment into the lightest area and you're gonna lose a lot of that highlight. Okay, you might be able to keep some, but you're still gonna lose a lot of it. So always work light to dark. And that is my um, example for that. I think I might like these better than the crowns, but let me just let me just look at the crayons again. Or not the crowns, the, the pencils. It's really tricky because in Canada we say pencil crowns. <laughs> in America, you guys say um colored pencils. So and but I'm also using the crayons here, so I'm sure it's confusing. But I hope you guys understand. Okay, so ooh, where do I start? I gotta start with the greens because you know. That's the whole reason why I bought this thing. This green is standing out to me, but I also love a really nice dark green too. I don't know where to start, but just, so it's a little bit different. These, uh, the crayons, the Caran Dash crayons are definitely more waxy. These have a more obviously watercolor pencil aspect to them, but I just, I just have to try out these greens. They're so pretty. They actually look kind of similar. One more down. Let me just gotta move my paper towel over here. Okay. Let me just try. Look at the greens. That's all I wanted. I just wanted a nice dark green, guys, and now I got a bunch. Yes, I am satisfied. And these look a little bit more smooth too. I'm not seeing as much texture underneath, which is really cool. Um, there's some really, really pretty colors. Let's try and blend with these. Ooh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I just saw this beautiful, what color is this? Sky blue, but it looks like a periwinkle. I don't know why I'm blending these two colors together. That doesn't make any sense to me either, but I'm going to do it. Again, just activating it, bringing it towards the center here. Wash off my brush, dry it a bit. And then bring it towards the center. Okay, so it blends very similarly. I definitely should have picked two different colors to blend together, but it blends really nicely. Um, layering. This is a really, I just want to test all the colors. Oh my goodness. Okay, but let's be mindful of layering. Um, let's do like another kind of pink and blue situation here. Um, or, yeah, yeah, why not? Let's do, let's try and create a magenta color. So this is a really great um, practice to do if you are looking to buy a smaller set and you don't, can't really get all these colors. Um, learning how to mix and layer them kind of helps. Okay, so not magenta, like a purpley color. But yeah, there's not as much texture with this, which is really cool. Because um, if you're not too that heavy into texture like this, this might be the better option. But I'm actually really liking this as well. I don't know. They're both great. They're they're both great. And then the cool thing is, is that after it's dried, you could always go back in and that's still wet. So that's not going to work. <laughs> but you can always add some more texture. Okay. I'm done playing with these. I want to dive right into, you know, painting slash drawing something. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention about why I am 
really leaning towards enjoying this medium is because if you're on the go, say you have a smaller set of these or you just have this with you, say you're on a train or in a park, you could do your full drawing with this and you wouldn't need your water cup, you wouldn't need all that stuff. Um, you could just have this in your sketchbook and then when you got home, you could always you know, add the water to it or if you have one of those water brushes that have the water right inside it, you could always use that too if you're on the go. So this is a really great option if you wanna kinda of just get artsy on the go. Okay, I think I'm in love, this is fun. Let's paint something. So I decided I wanted to start out with the crayons because they're the most vibrant and I haven't really played with them a lot before. So I wanted to paint this vibrant kind of peach photo that I got off Pinterest and it was a lot of fun. So I'm not gonna talk my way through each of these paintings. I'm kind of just gonna let you watch with some calming music because this is something that I'm just playing around with. I don't necessarily know if I am completely qualified for a real tutorial on these because I'm not, you know, I haven't mastered it yet. This is a new medium. I do have some tips and tricks that I've learned while playing with them before, but this is not, you know, my area of expertise. And with every time I paint with them or use them, I'm just gonna get better and better. And that's something I have to remember. This is a new medium that I've used a handful of times. And the more and more I use them, the better I will get at being able to figure out how to manipulate them the way I want to. And just, yeah, that's about it. But the one thing I do wanna say, I really enjoy the crayons. I think they're just so bright and vibrant and I do love the texture underneath. So these might actually um, be my favorite, but uh, we'll, we'll take a look and see how the pencils go as well. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the painting.
Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram and all my other platforms for tons more content. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.